uh, as we were looking through Exodus chapter 14 and we looked at the crossing of the Red Sea, one of the things that I thought was interesting about that passage, that chapter in chapter 14, is that God is specifically communicating that he is doing different things to two different people groups. Um, he specifically says at the beginning of the chapter that what he's about to do is going to reveal and demonstrate his glory to, the, to Pharaoh and to the people of Egypt. And so the crossing of the Red Sea and the subsequent destruction of the Egyptian army um, was intended to be something that highlighted to the Egyptian people and to Pharaoh specifically that God is a God of gods, a Lord of lords. Yahweh is the God of gods. At the same time, the crossing of the Red Sea, um, God specifically tells Moses um, and the people to see my salvation. I am going to deliver you. Um, I'm going to save you from what seems to be certain death. <clears throat> um, and in doing so, what he is asking the people of Israel to do is to trust him and to trust Moses and to depend on him. And so we have we have this one singular event that God has orchestrated, like God has led the people out, he's changed their path, he's moved them down into this area where they're sort of trapped between the sea and the wilderness, and he is using that event, that act that that plan of his um, as a means to do something specific for two groups of people. Um, the outcome is going, the event is going to be the singular event, but that event is going to impact two different people groups differently um, and what God's purpose is for them. So I find that interesting because in my life, there are oftentimes things that I see God doing in my life that I don't oftentimes understand why. Or, or I find myself in the midst of like what we talked about in the sermon yesterday, uh, in the midst of a test, like what is God doing? Why has he let these things happen? Why has God put me in this situation? Why has God allowed me to fight, to, to be where I'm at? <clears throat> and one of the things that I think is interesting about Exodus 14, one of the, one of the observations that I've made in, in studying and reading through it is that sometimes when God is working in my life to help me learn to depend on him, to trust him, um, to care for his, the things that he cares about. At the same time, he is using that event in my life to also impact the life of someone else, um, to reveal his character, his nature to someone else, or to point out that his glory and his holiness and his righteousness and his goodness to someone else. And so the thing that I was really intrigued with, and the thing that kind of stuck with me as I was preparing and studying for the sermon, <clears throat> is this idea, oftentimes I find myself wanting to ask the question, why? God, why did you do this to me? Why did you put me in this situation? And what I took away as studying through Exodus 14 was this notion that sometimes the test that God has for me, the thing that I'm going through, the thing that I'm dealing with, the, the thing that I'm processing through, is for me, it is for my good and his glory, um, but it is also for the work that he's doing in the life of someone else or some other people. And what I need to learn to do and what I hope I get better at doing is recognizing that what God is doing in my life is for me. God wants me to be more like him, transformed into the image of the Son, <clears throat> understanding and adapting and depending and trusting on him. But when God is at work in my life, that may also be an opportunity for God to show himself to someone else. And so although I may be in the midst of a test or trial or whatever it may be, um, I find comfort in knowing that I can trust that God is using that for his glory in my life, but also in the life of others. So... I find that interesting in chapter 14. The crossing of the Red Sea was not just for the Israelites. It was also for the Egyptians, that they would know that he is God. The Yahweh, Yahweh was the God of gods and the Lord of lords. So, have a blessed day.